transition. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the to take off. Are you serious? You're making good jokes right now when I'm exhausted. Eminem, can you do an American accent? Me? Yeah. No. No, would a guy have something like this up, or is this too feminine? Uh, not that that matters. Gender roles. I, I don't know my code. This is from like three years ago. So I'm trying to remember. One of the characters has to hold up a phone with a picture on it. Is my phone over there? But he's using his phone in the show. So. You talking about me? No, I'm talking about Caleb. <gasps> Was that it? This is my second year at Union. I love it. I love the people here. I love the students. I love our little theater. Last year we did Almost Maine, which I came in and had no idea who any of the students were. So I chose that because I was familiar with it. It's a really popular play in theater. And then last semester we worked on Rehearsal for Murder which got cut short. We were going into tech week right when um, lockdown started. So we didn't get to perform that. I'm sorry my personality upsets you. Maybe you'd prefer an American girl. Hello, I'm an American girl and I smile <laughs> and I laugh. <laughs> she hates that so much. And I think my blonde hair while I drink my Starbucks coffee. My first thoughts, when I found out we couldn't do a traditional in-person production was, oh man, how am I gonna pull this off? We had great success last year. I was really hoping things would be better at this point that we would get to do an in-person show. So I was kind of disappointed. And it being my second year as a theater professor, I feel like I just last year got a good handle on how to direct this specific community of students using the space you know in a creative way and now it's like totally new format and especially something that even though i've done theater my whole life we, this is completely new you know so there's really no blueprint for it so being a new professor i was like all right we're gonna make this happen she also said that i should take down my Backstreet Boys poster, so I did. Shut up. You don't have a Backstreet Boys poster. I freaking love the Backstreet Boys. Time Zones Apart is a new play by Eric Edson and Lauren Lynch, and it is written to be performed on a video chat, so like Zoom or FaceTime, and it's about long distance relationships, and that can include romantic relationships or friends who are no longer in the same place. Um, and it's a really unique thing, and we need it right now. <laughs> so. Yeah, we can, okay, on, in act two, you were on book, right? We could see you were looking at the lines. Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> Trust right. yourself, you know it. I am currently working on my dissertation uh, at Texas Tech University, and part of that is the development of an online undergraduate theater degree. And so because of that, one of the big questions is, how do we engage online theater students, both you know in the classroom, but also extracurricularly? And so this was kind of part of a project, Livestream Theater Stem, from how do we essentially produce a play online? And so this had actually started before the pandemic. So once the pandemic uh, hit, we had a lot of people reaching out to us of wanting to use scenes. And so some of those scenes we had plans to fully develop into a play. And that's kind of how Time Zones Apart came to be. The struggles of a long distance relationship. I can't wait until we don't have to deal with this anymore. Christy, I would say, especially was very interested in the idea of looking at online theater and the, pandem the pandemic hit. And there were a lot of schools who did not make the transition smoothly. 
I know Eric and Lauren from Texas Tech University. So I knew that Eric was working on his research in online theater. So I went to his website and I got some scenes for those actors to do for their final exam. And then one of those scenes, he came and watched it and it ended up being a full play that was developed. And so I was like, hey, I need a play and this seems perfect. <laughs> And he and Lauren were really gracious and they said based on our actors, they would, you know, write scenes for the actors. Are you okay? Ready for today? Ready as I'll ever be. We, we've been doing great, all of us. Oh yeah. I'm really proud oh, yeah. of us, for real. I'm just glad nobody's forgotten lines. That would have been a, a rough little segment there. <laughs> I feel like working on a new play is, is kind of, it's, it's groundbreaking. Like, it's kind of cool because you, you really kind of set the, the precedent for that character. With doing monologues and things, you kind of can go off of what somebody else did, but doing something new, it gives you your own opportunity to put your own spin on it. Um, that's the thing, we, we kind of haven't met yet. Hold on, wait, wait, time out. Isn't this how you got catfish last time, Sean? We actually were long distance ourselves for about a year and a half. Um, so a lot of it comes from personal experience. <laughs> um, but we started writing during the pandemic as well. So we all have experience with that now. I would say some of the scenes are kind of based on some experiences that either we've had or that we know people have in long distance relationships. And some of them maybe were based on that initially. And then we kind of, you know, elaborated on. Congratulations, you have passed the ultimate test and will be reunited with your queen in approximately five minutes. And I guarantee her pores will appear smaller and free of impurities. Ooh. I got involved with this production through Christy Connolly, who is an alum of my alma mater in undergraduate school at Birmingham Southern College, who my professors put me in contact with when I was first looking at graduate programs. And Christy reached out to me um, earlier in the semester and asked if I was participating in any of the fall productions and I said no and she said do you want to be? Hey! Hey! hey, boy. hey. Sorry I'm late. It's been a wild day so far. So we had one student performing in Dublin, Ireland. We had a designer in Colombia. We had a couple girls who were in Brazil during the initial rehearsal process and then came over here. We had a professional actor performing from New York City and we had Sarah Mayhew. She is now at Texas Tech. We also had a sound crew member from Israel. And that was really exciting because that meant that we were bringing an international cast and crew together, literally time zones apart. What other theater opportunity would they have a chance to be able to do those things, you know? That's one of the things about online theater too, is it's like looking at not just theater, but like any online opportunity, you've got students who one, are maybe so physically distant, they can't actually attend the university, the college, or you have students who maybe financially can't afford to, or you have students who might have some kind of physical ailment and they're not able to actually attend a traditional school in the normative sense. <laughs> right, you know, I had to flex my punch for adding more of my new job. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Congrats on the promotion, yeah. Thank you, bro. Uh, you know, I got to make more money to support my baller lifestyle. Because I got the mop. Watch me watch some light detergent. And uh, I'm balling. That's why it's uh, diamonds uh, on my jersey. OK, all right, I see you. All right, that song, it's good. It's a good one. It's almost as good as, why don't you come on over to It was really cool getting the students to be able to work with professional actors. Because at first, they were kind of intimidated, but they're, they're such sweet people, you know, and they were so generous to give their time and they were really excited to, you know, help, this, help the students grow as actors. It was cool to work with younger students who don't have so much like formal education getting in the way of their instincts that so they were much more able to just kind of give in to whatever whatever thought kind of struck them in the moment without thinking about like, okay, okay, this is my technique. This is what I need to get across in this scene. They just saw the text and they're like, all right, here's what I feel. And that was really cool to see. He's logging back in. Sorry, my internet cut out for a second. What I miss? Bro, I got killed by some zombies or something. They're called undead. Oh yeah, 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 they're called undead. And Torsen is about to go beast mode and avenge my death.
week after the band, you know, on a Monday. Hi, everybody. I would say people, especially theater educators, maybe even theater students, were overall opposed to online theater education. And I think that has a lot to do with kind of like the mystery of it, not knowing like, well, how do you do some of this stuff online? But when we have theater educators and students who were forced to go online, um, I think some of them realized, oh, this is actually a viable option and opportunity that we can pursue. And though forced to go online is not ideal for, <laughs> for any circumstance, um, I do think there was a lot of creativity that kind of came as a result of it. And I think because of that, it's going to be a huge, um, I don't know, I would say advocacy tool for online theater moving forward. One of the biggest challenges was getting buy-in from my students because they just fell in love with in-person theater. And then all of a sudden everything's online. There's Zoom fatigue. All of their classes are online. You know, so, oh, we're doing an online production. A lot of them were really disappointed and a lot of it was being a cheerleader and trying to talk about the advantages of online theater, even if I didn't believe it. <laughs> and, but also just being honest about, you know, my own disappointment, my own frustrations, because they can see right through you. And this was a big deal, it was the world premiere, you know, and there's something really exciting and even historic about that. So it was really awesome that we got to be part of that. I think they're too focused on getting the lines right at this point, which is fair because we haven't gone over this in a while. When you come into the theater, it's a completely different atmosphere. You learn so much about the people you're working with that it just kind of becomes like a new home. And so coming from constantly being around this family that you've developed and working with them side by side for a year constantly to an online format is just like it's almost a loss of connection <laughs> i'll be honest i i don't feel any connection sorry about that I, I need I need to feel it in person. Like there's a certain amount of like energy you feel in person. I don't think that translates through a screen. As a director, when you're given a constraint of space, it can be really exciting because it forces you to really focus in on what is there. You don't have as much to work with. So that was kind of exciting because I tend to look at like, okay, full space, big space in the theater, and what happens if you're literally pinpointed to this tiny little space, and what does that do to the actors? They're so free on that stage in person, and going from where they can move wherever they feel and whatever their intentions lead them, I imagine it would feel like jail for them because it, it feels awful for me because I'm just like, can you move a little closer? Maybe you can try a little farther away. like. It's just, you have to stay in that frame unless you have a phone and then we have to worry about, uh, can we hear you? Is like your hand over the mic? Are you moving too much? That background noise is too much. It's so difficult. I can't imagine how the actors feel with that. How is hanging out with everyone? You mean how is hanging out with Haley? I wasn't going to bring her up. You didn't have to, I knew what you meant. I was just asking about everyone. No, you weren't. As an actor, I've hated the transition into an online format because the online format to me is, is just so draining as a person. It's just overwhelming and exhausting because at least when you came here, it was in and out. But once you're in and out there, it's just like you, you dwell on it. Or did, I, did I do it well? Am I okay as an actor? Good news. What? I'm not sweating as much anymore. That's what's up, girl. When I played the role of Jimmy in Almost Maine, it was a lot different because when the audience was there, we had this huge stage and I knew constantly where they were, but I couldn't control where they were. And then online, I can just pick up the phone and I can take it around my room or I could even throw it <laughs> and the audience would see that. So I'm, I'm a lot more in control of the audience online. The challenges of making the switch to virtual theater have in, of course included the technology aspects. So do we have Wi-Fi? 
do the students, uh, cast and crew, have the appropriate devices? Do they have backup devices? How are we going to do this on Zoom with audience involved? Like, how, what platform are we even going to use to produce the production? Um, what does design even look like? What does scenic design look like? Cost, like, how do you incorporate all these elements in a completely new digital space? So it was just completely rethinking what theater looks like. I'm not allowed to cuss out here, am I? Yeah, so it's been a pain in the derriere. Um, <laughs> technical issues, getting mics and then the computer doesn't want to work, Wi-Fi. It's been a lot, but I feel like the end result will be worth it, so. Our audience will be watching through a screen. Uh, I imagine they would almost look at it as if TV instead of uh, a theater performance. And that's a, a really unforgiving format considering like we're live. So she calls in Oscar Adriana standby, then they say standing. Cause if something happens with internet and they're not there, we'd have to skip to the next scene. I literally asked her at one point, I was like, what do we do if something happens? She said, they improv it. Even then we're still having to prepare them for what happens if somebody's Wi-Fi goes down, what happens if your phone shuts off, what happens if we lose that platform, what happens if something happens to your partner. <laughs> I can't do that, not on the show day. Like, rehearsal maybe, but not on the show day. We can't control that because, especially with the physical format, we won't be there to tell them it's gonna be okay. We're gonna be an audience member, essentially, so we can't stop it if something goes wrong. It's been challenging, but it's also been a unique opportunity to kind of really focus on process. And I think one thing that's really special and powerful about this piece in particular is that all of the obstacles that the actors are facing, these, uh, this lack of physicality, you can't look people in the eye, these are all problems that the characters are facing too. So all of the frustrations that you're experiencing as an actor, like, uh, my screen is really laggy or their audio is kind of cutting in and out. Those are, those are things that the characters are experiencing too. So all of that kind of is underlying every single scene. And it adds, I think, just another layer of tension and conflict to every single moment in the play. And I think that's what's exciting about live stream theater is you can record it and then have it on YouTube to like watch later, but there's something about it being like, you're tuning into a live stream and things can go wrong. And that's part of the intrigue, you know? Human error is interesting to us. Can we not do a slide check? Where's that? Well, come on stage management, get it together. Silly gooses. You need to do it again. I'm gonna play music at the I same time. Some days are crazy, so just allow discoveries, allow what arises, and most of all, have fun. I'm so proud of you. Okay, let me play during the show. Music. Hold on one second. <clears throat> all right. Um, bring it. Y'all know what's up. The music's uh, not on put here. Yourself on mute. What? Sorry. Or well, I guess your sound, but. Uh, um, we got two minutes. Yes. Okay. So the <laughs> camera's off. No, Love fine. you guys. No, 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 no. no. I don't do it. Um, if pre-show music's gonna be a pain in the ass. No, worry. we have no music. What? Uh, no music whatsoever. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna look at. Uh, not do music check, you guys. No, it's wiped away, Christy. Yeah, it's okay. I'm gonna look it up on my phone and I'm just gonna play the songs in between. We got it, it's okay. I promise. Don't do the music track. No, why is it on No, what, you need to stop. It's not on here, it's okay. I'll just do that. It is scattered. Okay. What are the songs? <laughs> Bursting at the seams, so I'm go right ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm bursting at the seams. So thank you, John. Uh, congratulations um, to all of you. I, I I wish you could get the applause. That's one thing that you don't get to have anymore. And so here I am. Here I am. Oh. I'll join too. The world premiere was amazing. I had no idea. You know. I, 
are people gonna respond to this? I thought all the time about, okay, the audience response. I have no control over their attention. But the chat feature was really interesting. There was a chat on the side where the audience could respond and it became like its own second performance. It was really meta. And in a lot of audience research, people are always wondering and trying to research like what is the audience feeling? What are they thinking? They've done like EKG, like what is the physiological response of the audience based on what they're seeing, uh, brain scans. And with this, I mean, it's not as physiological, but it was interesting. It's like this moment, this person typed this in and this is intriguing to them and this works. I got dubbed in the comments a couple of times. It's like Oscar's selfish. They don't make planes that just go from Brazil to America. I'm like, damn, I didn't think people felt that like heavily about it. A lot of the times families can't travel here. We're in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> Eastern Kentucky. So, you know, parents and family members from this, really all over the world were able to tune in. And something that was really exciting for me personally is that a lot of my friends from graduate school, even undergrad, some of my old teachers, you know, they got to tune in and see what we're doing. And they wouldn't have been able to see any of it if if it was in person. Thank you, everybody. You know, it's it's a world premiere. And so to be able to, to kind of develop it with, you know, Union College and, and the students, I mean, that part has been fabulous. So if you sent that Snapchat from Tennessee all that time ago from the airport, that would put you pretty close to here, right? Um, you know what? I would actually say I'm getting pretty close. Is that you? Come find out yourself. Everyone um, is finding themselves distanced, like socially distanced in real life, and then just kind of a little more isolated than usual. So the hope is that um, by seeing these vignettes of all of these different characters who are going through essentially the same struggles that they are, that we all feel a little more connected um, that we're in this together. So hopefully we'll give people some hope. So I think and what I hope that the audience will take away from this show is that we can still connect during the pandemic. Um, I think the need to reach out and be heard by another person is more powerful than our current circumstances and any physical distance that can be between two people right now. And I also hope that the show is just an opportunity for them to kind of step outside of the current reality and just enjoy some storytelling for 90 minutes. You know, I think escapism is a really powerful thing about theater that can be underrated a little bit when people talk about like the cultural importance of theater. <laughs> Sometimes all it has to do is entertain. And I think right now, especially that's the biggest gift that we can give to our audiences is just to distract them for a little while and give them something to immerse themselves in. Everyone needs a little bit of escapism right now. I can do that. We've had essentially a month to get this up and running when we normally have two or three. We've had to work with the technical pieces immediately when we only really ever need to do that by tech week. We have had to start incorporating everything for our actors when normally that's not how it works. We've had to incorporate costumes and technical aspects and sound and transition when we've never had to do that before. Mm -hmm. All right, so... Professor Connolly, she is honestly a champion for taking it the way she has. And of course, between the both of us, it's been so incredibly difficult, as it would be for anybody, like everybody, when COVID happened, had to move immediately online and hope for the best. Considering everything, she has been fantastic with the transition. I definitely commend Christy for being able to say, hey, like, we got to keep things going. We, <laughs> we got to let the theater department thrive. And so taking the theater department online is, it, it's a huge gamble, but I would say a gamble that definitely paid off, especially for Christy and Union and, uh, and her students. So I, I think you all did a really fantastic job um, with the writing, the direction, the design. I love that there was design. I took a note, it was fantastic. Um, and the performances for, for a Zoom piece. This was very successful for you all. So congratulations.
you all and what you've done tonight and will continue to do. Uh, you're at the top of you're at the top of the totem pole right now compared to what I the seven things I've seen since this semester started. The quality, the sound, um, the the picture quality. I mean, you all are at the top, and I think you should you should know that and, and be proud of it. To do and produce an online show is huge, and that is that is very revolutionary. That is you know a pioneer in kind of the theater. I guess discipline. So to be able to do that is very cool to see. Let's see who's in my breakout room. Hey, there she is. Oh wait, I'm muted. Hey, smile big, you're on. We're uh, being filmed for the documentary right now. <laughs> this is my uh, my fiance. So yeah. I really do love you. I still do. I just. I don't expect you to love me back after what I did to you today, but I just wanted you to know, so there it is. Well, I cried yesterday, guys. Yeah, I was, I, I, I honestly was trying not to laugh. I was like, that's acting right know, there. Do like, you know why I cried? Why? Because I had a soccer game and I made a mistake and they scored and I was so upset and I was like, you know what? I'm going to use that. And I just cried so much. That right there, that's acting. That's acting. That's <laughs> soccer star by day, actor by night. That's acting right here. <laughs> Hello, my love. Hey. What's wrong? It's just my parents again. Uh, what, what is it this time? They're saying I can't leave any of my stuff in their house once I move to America, or else I have to pay them a thousand reais. That's like $200. My mom doesn't know English, uh -huh. but she watched our play yesterday, and she said Eminem. <laughs> she said Eminem. I don't know English, but I think you were in love with him. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. In this kind of format and in this kind of scene that these characters are in, they have to find different ways to reach the same conclusion, if that makes sense. So they're having to be creative in the moment and work a little bit harder to get the same message across and that's been that's been a challenge as an actor but i think i think it's going to be helpful for anyone who works in this format whenever we do return to an in-person format because all of the words that you're saying have to count double in this format and i think that's something that we can take out of this whenever we can hopefully return to in-person productions when we go back to traditional theater I will erase everything that happened from my mind because it has been an absolute nightmare. No, I'm kidding. Actually, I do think playwrights have a really big chance right now to create new work because it's so needed. You know, if somebody creates a play that can be performed online, I'm gonna snag at that. I'm gonna pay you your rights, <laughs> you know, because we need it. You know, we've been talking about like where theater is and where it's going because millennials and Gen Z were very into like choice and it's like a video game where you choose your own adventure. And so I think there's, you know, big opportunity for theater when it has to be virtual or it has to be social distance. There's a lot you can do with spatial relationship where it's like dealing with this distance and what that means. I think the future of theater will be in person. I, I could see some struggles with social distancing. As far as online goes, I think that even with COVID going away and all these regulations disappearing, I think there's still gonna be a lot of online play still. I think this is a new era. Online is an interesting experiment because like right now I feel like it's one of the only options. Uh, I feel like it's eventually it's gonna be, it's gonna die out because it's so gimmicky. Like I can't see this lasting long like long term, but I can see it being done every now and then as a gimmicky play, if that's the only option. I feel like the future of theater, it, um, it'll it be fluid. So doing a show like this shows that we can adapt to times of whatever happens. Cause to be able to portray a love scene over a computer screen is not as easy as I thought it would have been. You know, you blow a few extra kisses at a person, but like you don't get the, the body language of it. So it's like, that's another barrier that you have, but it definitely shows that, that anything is possible, really. 
but I really hope to get back to like normalized, at least some version of it, because it's just been a lot. <laughs> Side note, I think your arms are really short. <laughs> She's just really tight. Yeah, you hold it. He's got a wingspan of seven. Wow! He did that with ease. That is impressive! <laughs> when the pandemic hopefully soon ends, um, it's not the end of online theater. I think a lot of people find it to be accessible for students who aren't able to um, explore going to a campus in person, but still really want to pursue online theater or theater in general, um, especially those graduate students who maybe have a full-time job as well and they're doing this kind of on the side um, it's it's definitely going to shape the way that theater is done in the future which is kind of exciting <laughs> <laughs> i don't think anyone really knows what the future of theater looks like at this point i think i think a lot of people have some guesses but um, a lot of it really depends right now on the legislation that's up in the air like the save our stages act i think one thing that we can expect hopefully, is kind of a bloom of local theater. So we're seeing a mass exodus, a mass artistic exodus from places like New York and San Francisco and Los Angeles, which I'm sure is really devastating for the people who are having to leave because, you know, they probably had this dream for decades and they were like, okay, this is what I want to do. I'm gonna drop everything. I'm moving to New York. I'm gonna pursue my passion. And now that's kind of up in the air. But the really exciting thing about that is that these people are leaving New York, yes, but they're going to other places. They're not just vanishing. So they're going to smaller cities. They're going to cities that maybe don't have the artistic resources that New York has. And the thing about artists is that they're really good at finding other artists and they're really good at finding ways to make art. So these people are going to congregate together and they're going to find ways to gather the resources that they need to do what they love to do. So for instance, we're probably going to see, at least I hope we are going to see, artists coming together to create institutions and kind of collectives that maybe cities didn't have before. We're going to see a bloom in like cultural hubs and I think that's going to be a great opportunity for youth who maybe didn't have anyone to talk to about painting or about musical theater before and now there's going to be all these professionals who have experience in the industry who can kind of relay their advice, relay their experiences to these kids and hopefully inspire them. If that happens, maybe we'll see a trickle effect and we'll see more cultural centers, the likes of DC, so that maybe artists don't have to drop everything and move away from their families and their careers to go to New York. They can do it closer to home. And maybe if that happens, there'll be less competition. And with less competition, we could maybe see a reform in the working conditions of theater, like casting equity and wage equity and things that the theater has needed to change for a really long time. I know that seems like a, a really optimistic view of the future, but that's kind of what I have to tell myself is going to happen. But I think one thing that we can be sure of is that theater is going to return. I mean, as long as people have been able to look up at the stars, they've been able to tell stories, they've been able to make theater. This isn't going to change that. It's going to change maybe how it looks. Like uh, Broadway a year ago looked really different from the Greek forums and Broadway 10 years ago is going to look different, but it's not going to die. It's just going to change a little bit. And I'm excited to see how it will change because I think better things are coming. I think the theater has really helped a lot of people on campus to become closer together. A lot of people that join theater become a lot more creative, I think, especially me personally. <laughs> but a lot of my friends that have come over here to theater, we really made a big strong bond together and instead of friends we became family. I feel like arts was kind of dying in this area. I don't think it's ever been focused on but I feel like since the theater programs came here I think it's given life to Barberville as a whole not just Canvas. And so to be able to give them these online opportunities we're now so much more inclusive instead of exclusive which I think is very important for theater especially. You know, I've met so many great people and I've met so many friends, but like I think most importantly, if I met my girlfriend through uh, theater and uh, I think I finally found someone that I would like really want to spend the rest of my life with. And I don't know, I think it's it's been great. Um, you know, I was not doing so well before theater and I think it finally gave me a home. I think the theater program has affected me in a lot of ways. I'm sure you've gotten it a lot. Um, I found a home, which was nice. 
Sorry. Chrissy's been like a monkey. She's always been there whenever I needed her. Which is something I've never had. Um, high school was really hard for me. So coming here and not knowing anybody was, um, wasn't anything new, but it was really hard because I was in a new space. I found a lot of people that I wouldn't have found had I not joined theater. I found some of, some of my lifelong friends, I think, who have taught me a lot. And even people that haven't stuck around have taught me so much. Patience, it's taught, it's taught me a lot of patience. I think it's just taught me how to be a better person. It's got me out of my shell. It's changed me a lot. I'd say since, I mean, every new semester, I'm, I feel like I've just improved as a person. Even with all of the negative pieces that can come about, it's, I think it's changed my life.